Hey everybody, I hope you're having an awesome day once again. I am totally psyched because football season has just begun and we get to learn some Git. It sounds like I am a total geek, but I'm totally cool with that. So last time on our video in part zero, we basically installed Git and we set up a repository on GitHub. So these are the steps that you follow. I'm going to go over them really quickly. The top steps right here, git config, that was setting up your name and your email. The reason you do that is because every time you send files to GitHub or you make any changes, it keeps track of who did what. That makes it a lot easier, especially if you're working on a project with 20 people. You have an idea of who did what, so you don't have to go asking 20 different people, did you make this change? Now after that, in this section called Next Steps, we created a readme file and we made our first commit. Now I'm going to go over what a commit is later, but what I want to focus on right now is this remote add origin line right here. Now you're only going to usually do this once per repository. And what that basically is doing is it's telling your local computer, your local repository, that GitHub is holding all the files and let me bring this up right here so you have your local computer and when we add remote we're basically telling our local computer that github is going to hold our files we can push files and that's a git command we can push our changes to github and we can pull changes back now why do we want to pull changes back if we're the only one using it we don't really need to pull anything from github because we're not going to make any changes on github but if we have some friends who are also working on this project, they are also going to be pushing their changes. And therefore, if we want to stay updated to the latest and greatest code, we're going to have to pull that code in so we can always know what's going on. And that's pretty much all those steps right there. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump into the command line. And I want to show you the one command you're probably going to use the most it's the git status command so if I type git status it, it literally tells me what the status is it's a pretty simple command it tells me I'm on branch master don't worry about branching yet and I have nothing to commit working directory is clean now I want to show you what a commit is but first let's go ahead and edit that readme file that we had at the beginning so I'm going to use TextMe for this and I'm going to open up the readme file and we have our blank readme file so I want to add one line in here I want to say hello world because I'm completely unoriginal I'm going to save that I'm going to close it and now I'm going to do git status again and there's my git status now when you do git status you probably won't have any colors like I do like the green and the red right there look in the comment section below and there's a command to make the colors show up I prefer the colors it's a lot easier to see but do whatever you want now you'll notice in red I have the modified readme and the reason it's in red is because git has noticed that I made a change but I haven't told it really to record this change I haven't told it that I'm okay with this change so if I want to let it know I'm okay with it I gotta do git add readme press enter I want to clear this out. Let's do another git status right here. And now it's in green. It, no, it noticed that I made that change. So let's go ahead and really quickly change the file again. I want to say, how are you? Save it, close it, and let's do another git status. Now you can see I have two different copies. The green one, which just says, hello world, and the red one, which says, hello world, how are you? So I need to go ahead and add that again so I can tell Git that I want it to keep that latest and greatest. And then, if I do a Git status, I'm back to where I was. Now I'm going to go ahead and commit my changes. I'm going to do a Git commit with a message. The fl M flag is a message. And I want to say, added text to readme file. I want to press enter and it notice a change. So before I keep moving on, what is a commit? Now the best way I could think of describing it is it's essentially a save state. It takes a snapshot of your file directory as it is when you make the commit. It, notice, it knows all the changes and what files are in there. So the best way I could think of it is like a video game. Imagine every time you paused a video game, it created a save state. Pretty cool. 
that means you can go back anywhere you want every time you press pause. So if you press pause and you play the video game for 10 or 20 more seconds and then you die in the video game, you can go back to your most recent commit or your most recent save state and continue again, knowing that what you did killed yourself so you know to avoid it next time. Now the great thing about committing is you can make as many commits as you want. You can make 100 save states if you want before you send anything off to GitHub. It doesn't matter and that's the beauty of it because if you mess something up, you can go back 50 save states. If you realize I'm taking this project to a whole new world and you realize maybe 50 save states later, it's awful, you can go all the way back to where you were before. It remembers every time you do a commit. But keep in mind, you have to actually do this command, the git commit command, otherwise it's not going to remember it. So I can add as many as I want, but uh, and when I say add, I can do a git add as much as I want. But unless I do a commit, it's not going to work. So I made my commit called add a text to readme file. And don't worry about going backwards just yet. That's going to be in a future video. For now, we just want to actually make the commit. But now that I've done it, if I check my status again, I have nothing there anymore. Now, why do I have nothing? Because remember, I made a save state. So my save state is already saved, and that's called a commit. So if you see the message right here, my branch is ahead by one save state or commit. That means I've made one save state that GitHub my remote repository does not have. So I need to send that save state to GitHub. And it's incredibly simple. I do a git push origin, whoops, origin master. And that will send my save states. Now, I want to be completely honest with you. You can just do git push, but it is highly recommended, and I highly recommend this personally, that you do git push origin master because you want to specify where you're pushing it because once you get more advanced in git you're going to be doing git push origin batch one or git push origin project b different stuff and if you keep doing just push you're going to push your files into the wrong place and you could really do some major damage so always specify where you're pushing it for now origin master is perfect just leave it at that and that's pretty much it we push our file now if i do a git pull nothing's really going to happen because I haven't made any changes online. But let's go ahead and check out GitHub right now. And let's go to our hello git repository. And you'll notice I have right there, three minutes ago, added text to readme file. And there's the readme file right there. Hello world, how are you? And you see it's green right there. I just clicked it. Two green lines because I added those two. And it's pretty much that simple. And if I have any of my friends, like in this slide right here, if they do a pull, they're going to get that readme file with the hello world, how are you text. It is just that easy. And we're going to go over merge conflicts and stuff in later videos. But just go ahead and play around with this. Make some changes to some files. Make some save states. Remember to add them because you want Git to keep track of it. But remember to add, remember to commit, and commit often. And then remember to push those files and then check GitHub and see it all in action. And that's pretty much it. In the next video, I think I'm going to, I have some notes right here. Let's see what I'm going to do next. In the next video, I think I'm going to be going over the Git log, Git show, uh, how to unstage files if you don't want to track them at all. And just checking out and a little bit of resetting. So resetting, like I mentioned, if we want to go back a couple of save states, I'll show you how to do that. And uh, you guys have an awesome day, and uh, I'll see you next video.